Halo Infinite's multiplayer is looking to have some issues when it comes to your inputs as well as skill-based matchmaking. If you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So in this video, I want to talk about and give you guys some information about multiplayer for Halo Infinite. As I'm sure many of you are patiently waiting for us to get some more information about it. Well, in the last April development update about Halo Infinite, we did get a little bit of insight when it comes to the experience when it comes to playing the multiplayer. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So there are two main topics I want to talk about in this video, and that is input-based matchmaking, strict input-based matchmaking, as well as skill-based matchmaking. But we'll go into what we know for sure right now, and that is the input-based matchmaking. Stated here in the recent April development update saying, social playlists and custom matches are open to all. You can play on any platform and any device with anyone you like. For ranked matches, we plan to restrict competitive playlists based on input type, not console versus PC. That's because we believe that input is the biggest differentiator in gameplay ability with things like aim assist on a controller and precision of sniping on mouse. You can play with a controller on PC to play ranked with your console friends or even mouse and keyboard on your console to play with your ranked PC friends. Which that does sound rather inclusive, which is certainly a step forward from what we've had previously in Halo, but it does also sound a little too restrictive for some reason. Restrictive because obviously with the competitive side of Halo and playing ranked modes, that yeah, input device really does matter. We've come across this issue a lot with MCC on PC where with that crossplay implemented with controller versus mouse and keyboard that controllers really kind of taking the step forward as the device you want to use if you want to, you know, get every inch of advantage that you can while playing Halo, which you do need when you get to those higher level ranks. From my experience of, you know, streaming MCC every Tuesday and Thursday night, by the way, link in the description down below for our Twitch channel if you want to check us out there. We play every Tuesday and Thursday. I play with the community all the time, but pretty much I've noticed that, you know, the lower levels, you'll see a nice little mix of mouse and keyboard input devices, but once you get to like 15 and higher, it's almost all controller. And that's because these classic Halo games are built from the ground up to play well on a controller. It's great that you can play on mouse and keyboard. There are some great streamers out there like Active who do a great job of playing on mouse and keyboard only and keeping up with a lot of these controller players. Even Lethal, who's a Halo Pro, got a 50 in Halo Reach Hardcore playing on mouse and keyboard only. Only. So it's certainly possible, but it's definitely more difficult. But the recent addition in the MCC, so you have a choice for players. If you want to play against only controller, or if you only want to play against mouse and keyboard, you can do that in the options, even for social and for competitive side of things. Now, why have that hard split in the player base with input devices in Halo Infinite without giving players the option? If they don't care about playing against mouse and keyboard or play, don't care about playing against controller, they just want to find a good lobby of people to play against, and even ranks, then give that issue of people having that problem with input device issues, then put that on the player. If they have, you know, matchmaking open for everybody, that's kind of on their fault if they want to have that specific kind of experience. I just don't see how we can't have a toggle for input based matchmaking like we do with the MCC right now. Because what's going to happen is essentially you're going to have these two different levels of playing, right? You're going to have, oh, he's like, let's see, hypothetically say they use the 1 through 50 system in Halo Infinite, which I don't believe they will. But hypothetically, you will have a split within the community again, like, oh, he's a controller 50, and oh, he's a mouse and keyboard 50, and there's going to be people saying that one is better than the other, and they won't truly know. How's that going to work with professional tournaments as well? I mean, obviously, you want to have an even playing field as much as possible, so playing on the same input device would certainly make a factor. But when it comes to like HCS tournaments, I'm sure there's the guys who want to go pro playing on mouse and keyboard and there's going to be guys who want to go pro playing on controller. Are you going to have like separate leagues when it comes to Halo Infinite's competitive scene? That doesn't seem to make any sense right there. And ultimately, this all should just kind of even out because they also mentioned about skill-based matchmaking within Halo Infinite. Stated in the recent blog update, 
If we are doing our job right in combination with our true skill two ranking system, everyone should be able to trust that they're getting a fair shake in crossplay ecosystem. Meaning how good you are on mouse and keyboard should also even out with how good someone is on controller as well. So even if you're playing with different input devices, if you're able to play at the same skill level, then why wouldn't true skill two be able to kind of filter out the difference in somewhat skill level and put in quotations there and it should out bounce itself out utilizing true skill 2. I mean, we played true skill 2 matchmaking system most of Halo 5's lifespan, and it does a pretty good job of matching you against guys who are roughly about the same skill level. Obviously, with the way the population is right now in Halo 5, you kind of get a little bit in imbalanced matches, but there's going to be a big population boom when it comes to Halo Infinite, so I'm assuming that even if there is this input device discrepancy, that true skill 2 should be able to balance those two out together. The big thing with skill-based matchmaking, though, is going to be how strict is it going to be i'm all for skill-based matchmaking being in halo but if it's going to be super strict where like you're going to be playing as you know sweaty pros the whole time like how, kind of like how i'm experiencing right now with call of duty cold war that it kind of makes the social experience not nearly as fun as it could possibly be but i'm all for having like a looser skill-based matchmaking where brand new players or players with disabilities and you know people who just are not good at the game pretty much don't get matched against players like me who have been been, you know playing halo for essentially 20 years and know though the kind of mechanics that go in with playing halo obviously there's certainly a discrepancy there but also i don't want to be, be playing where i'm like always against like the sweatiest boys i've ever played against in my entire life i know for a fact during halo 5 some of these social matchmaking parameters were actually stricter than some of the ranked parameters which to me doesn't really make that much sense obviously with the less people playing ranked and social more people are going to be going towards social that maybe you need to loosen up the parameters and rank so then people can find matches that's certainly an issue as well though it just would make more sense if you're trying to rank up you want to have a fair as possible match so you're matching against equal skilled players that you would have a rather stricter setup where in social you can probably loosen that up a little bit because that's not the type of environment that you're going into when you want to play social people play social because they don't want to try super hard at doing well in the game not even doing well but just like having fun and if people are having these huge skill discrepancies within a social experience then it's just not going to be an enjoyable time people complained about not having social within halo 5 saying it was too sweaty because it was all ranked when you first started playing halo 5 but then if you're bringing social back into halo and then it's going to be just as difficult as it was playing ranked then it kind of just defeats the purpose and it's all just like a veil just so people don't feel like they have to try so hard when really they actually do. So there's a really fine balance that 343 needs to find when it comes to that stuff. 343 is very responsive to community feedback and so I do expect them to listen to the community, be able to tweak things like this if we want like our skill-based matchmaking and social to be a little bit more loose and obviously with the rank side of things be a lot more strict. But ultimately we won't really know until the game releases but we can certainly make our voices heard because 343 is listening to the community. So if you missed any content from me recently or want to stay updated with Halo, if you've been on the loop for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. i got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.